This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here is the SmackDown that Microsoft invited. I might not think it's the most appropriate or brilliant SmackDown, but they started it. You've been asking for it. So here we have the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. It's a tablet. It's sort of a laptop. And here we have the latest generation Apple MacBook Air. We're going to compare them now. All right, so here is the prize fight that Microsoft themselves invited when they first introduced the Microsoft Surface Pro 3, which is both a Windows laptop of sorts, running Windows 8.1 and a tablet. Got the new Metro UI right here. The optional keyboard attached. And here we have the latest generation Apple MacBook Air 13 inch now. Microsoft compared both the 11 and the 13 inch models, but they focused a little bit more on the 13 inch because that's one of the more popular Ultrabooks on the market. If you can call an Apple product an Ultrabook, that is a a term that Intel coined for PCs that competed with the MacBook Air, but that's another thing. So, why is this kind of weird and silly? Yes, they're both computing products. They both can run Office, web browsers. You can get lots of work done on full Windows programs on the Surface Pro 3 here, not just those Metro Live Tile applications. But there the similarities end. Okay, so this is a tablet and a laptop. More so a tablet. 3 by 2 aspect ratio means that it's pretty good to use in portrait mode. That makes sense because this keyboard is detachable. Here it is. It comes right off. It's the Surface type cover for the latest generation Surface right here and it comes in a couple of different colors. This is not included in the box for starters. So for the Core i5, 4 gigs, 128 gig SSD configuration, you're looking at $999. That's the same price as you'll pay for the MacBook Air 13 inch with that configuration. Aha, uh -huh. but with the Mac, you know what? The keyboard is here. You can't take it off. You can't say, hi, we're going to charge you separately for that. So really, you have to add in $130 extra for our friend the keyboard here. So that brings it up to $1,129 or so. So a little bit more expensive for the Surface Pro 3. Now that is not an unfair thing though because there's a lot of technology packed in the Surface Pro 3 and in terms of technology, it's going to win. So what, what makes the Surface Pro 3 so cool? Well, the fact that it is also a tablet, which is, well, pretty handy if you have a use for a tablet. And everybody loves tablets in part thanks to the iPad Air. So it's an IPS display. The camera may not show the viewing angles as well as it looks in person, but it's pretty good viewing angles. Really good color accuracy here, covering almost 100% of sRGB. 2160 by 1440 resolution, so it's a very high resolution display. Gorgeous to look at. You're paying for these things. You're paying for the fact that this is 0.36 inches thin, which is the thinnest of the Surface Pro models yet. It's pretty amazing that they managed to get this thing because there has to be a fan in here and all the usual room for components that are inside of a laptop, but just inside of this tablet right here. It's also 1.76 pounds. That weight does go up to 2.4 pounds with the type cover attached. So I, I think if you're going to compare this to the MacBook Air, you have to include the keyboard because obviously you're interested in a keyboarded product. So that makes it 2.4 pounds. Now our friend the MacBook Air over here with its permanently attached and very functional keyboard, 2.96 pounds. So about a half a pound difference here. It looks very slim. It tapers to like 0.19 inches on the edges. Aha! Uh -huh. Apple's very good at design. That makes it look very slim. At its thickest part, point, it is 0.86 inches. So it is a bit thicker. Still, it's not a burden to carry this thing around. And do you feel the difference in the weight between the Surface Pro 3 and the 13-inch MacBook Air? And that is with the keyboard cover attached. Yeah, the Surface Pro 3 still does feel well, lighter. In terms of footprint, 13-inch laptop, typical size of this. So this is right here with the MacBook Air and the 12-inch display. You're getting a little less screen real estate here versus 13.3 inches. You can see the difference in footprint for those of you who carry it in a bag and you care about well where it's going to fit and where it isn't going to fit. I know a lot of people would love Apple to make a 12-inch laptop again. Maybe someday they will. For those who find an 11-inch too small and the 13.3-inch just not quite as portable as they'd like, but there's that. Side view of them together. And there you have it. Another cool feature that you get with the Surface Pro 3 is, of course, the digital pen. This is an Entrig Active Pen with palm rejection. Great for those of you who take notes or who are artists. So there you go. There's a couple of reasons why the Surface Pro 3 costs a bit more. It's, it's certainly a much more um, technologically innovative product here with a couple of added features like the high resolution display, the digital pen, the interesting Keyboard design, by the way, the keyboard is backlit, so you're not even giving up on backlighting. Uh, the Surface Pro 3 
runs, and this is without including the keyboard cover, about $100 more as you move up the food chain. It gets progressively a bit more expensive as you increase your configuration. That is, say you want to go with the Core i7 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. Now, the equivalent model in the MacBook Air is $100 less, so you're looking at about $1449 versus $1549. For the top of the line model, Core i7, 8 gigs of RAM, again with a 512 gig SSD, that's $1749 for the 13 inch MacBook Air and $1949 for the Surface Pro 3. So uh, Apple has a reputation for having the expensive hardware, but in this case, actually, Surface Pro 3 does cost more. Again, like I said, it's fair. You do get stuff for that. And of course you have the kickstand here, so for those who want to use it as a tablet, there it is. It's the built-in kickstand, multi-position, you can do this. And if you want to learn everything about it, of course, watch our video review, read our written review of the Surface Pro 3. Same is true for the MacBook Air. So all of that's really lovely, and I think it's very eye-catching, and people who probably don't really need all the features of Surface Pro 3 are nonetheless captivated by the fact that it can do all those neat things. But in the end, what's important is to think about is what you need your little laptop or your hybrid device to do. Do you need the pen? Do you think you're going to use it or you think, well, that's really nifty, but I'm never going to use it. Do you want to take the keyboard off or not? Do you really type a lot? Because you're probably going to like the MacBook Air. Macs have some of the best keyboards on the, on the planet. And even the MacBook Air, which is a very thin keyboard, has a nice normal keyboard with good key travel right here, backlighting as well, best of breed trackpad if you're running Mac OS X. That's the thing also to keep in mind with Macs. Some of you guys buy these and gals and you think, that, well, I'm just going to boot camp and run Windows on all the time. I don't recommend that so much. I mean, it's not the the end of the world if you if you do that kind of thing, but the drivers are much better under Mac OS in terms of battery life, in terms of trackpad drivers, all that sort of stuff. You're going to enjoy this more if you're happy running Mac OS. So that's another reason why Microsoft's comparison is almost a little bit bizarre because we've got two different operating systems here and it really depends on which one you prefer. Now Parallels is an option for our MacBook Air as well and that is a virtual machine so it just runs Windows inside of Mac OS. And there you don't have to worry about driver issues because, well, you're still running the main drivers for Mac OS behind the scenes. So that's a good solution for those of you who like a Mac OS and you just want to run some Windows applications some of the time. You need them for school or for work, whatever it is. So for those of you who just want a portable machine, good typing experience, all that sort of thing, the MacBook Air is a great machine. Now, in terms of display, 1440 by 900 resolution. These days, a lot of Windows Ultrabooks are full HD, 1920 by 1080, or even higher, like our friend the Surface Pro 3, a 2160 by 1440. So, not quite as sharp on the MacBook Air. The other thing is this is a TN panel, not IPS. Now, it's one of the better TN panels on the market in terms of not suffering much when you, when you do this. You know, it, you don't see a whole lot of color shift and all that kind of thing. So it, as TN panels go, it's great. It's still not as good as IPS in terms of viewing angles. Also, color accuracy on this is kind of uh, average, you know, like 50% of Adobe RGB versus 70%, 75% rather, on the Surface Pro 3. So for those of you who do work with graphics applications, you're probably going to want to think about the 13-inch Retina rather than the MacBook Air at all if the display counts. I can tell you my eyes get a lot less tired looking at the Surface Pro 3, even though everything is teenier on this being a 12 inch display. Now, one more thing about that. Notice how easy it is on the MacBook Air. You can see the web page right there, no problem. Now, let's bring up the same web page over here. Now, I have this set to 150% scaling right now, and it's pretty readable here too because IE handles scaling pretty well. The challenge is if you're running something like Photoshop, the UI elements don't scale well on these high DPI Windows displays. So here we have Photoshop open on both of these, and if you take a look at the size of the menu and the tool elements here, notice how teeny it is on the Surface Pro 3. Now, Adobe eventually will handle scaling better in the UI sometime later this year, they say, but this is kind of indicative of the problem that a lot of uh, Windows programs that haven't been updated for Windows 8 and high DPI scaling have. And of course, Adobe does have a kind of 200% zoom option that makes the tools like wickedly too big, honestly, on this particular size display. It's really good for the resolution displays that are really, really high, but not so much for this. I think that it wastes a lot of UI space, so I actually leave it with the teeny things. And you look at the Mac over here and everything as well, 
a much easier to manage normal size. Their menus are not microscopic and all that sort of thing. So there you have it. Uh, high resolution displays under Windows 8 and 8.1. That's a caveat to have that Mac OS handles scaling much more smoothly than does Windows at this point. Or really, it's not the operating system. It is the third party programs, the applications actually under Windows that are the problem. All, uh, all the stuff that's built in that Microsoft makes scales just wonderfully and fine. Lastly, touchscreen. Of course, this being a tablet also, and, and there, there are Windows laptops with touchscreens as well that have typical laptop form factors, but here you have touch. So when you're done, if you can touch that teeny UI element in the case of something like Photoshop, you can just close it by touching that element there. If you want to switch tools, you can tap on them again. A little bit hard here because it's small. You can also use the pen to do that. With the Mac, no touchy. Touching the screen won't do any good. And while we're still talking about screens a little bit here, you can see that there's a little glare here, but this is pretty good job of making a fairly moderately glossy display not reflect too much. Surface Pro 3 is a lot, even though it's a bonded glass, you can see how it has more reflections. In terms of brightness, they're actually pretty similar. Now, in terms of performance, this is an interesting thing because Apple uses even lower power Haswell fourth generation CPUs. Those are Intel Core i5 and i7 options here. Surface Pro 3, we have Core i3, i5, and i7 options. So, honestly, I don't recommend the Core i3, especially it comes with only a 64 gig SSD drive. And being that this is full Windows, that's just not really enough space for a lot of folks, I don't think. But anyway, we're going to focus primarily on the Core i5 and i7 options here. So, 1.4 and 1.7 gigahertz. It sounds pretty slow there, all dual core on both of these, but actually it benchmarks very well. In cross-platform benchmark tests, there are a few like Geekbench 3. Actually, it benchmarks surprisingly similarly to our 1.9 gigahertz core i5 that's in here. Both of these have 4 gigs of RAM and 120 gig SSDs, and they both score around 3,000 single core and around 6,000 for multi-core, so surprising there. One thing that Apple did that's pretty cool with the MacBook Air is they put Intel HD 5000 graphics, a step up on the integrated graphics chain there versus HD 4400 on our Core i5 model right here. So a bit better graphics performance. Neither of these is really intended for gaming, honestly. I mean, you can play Diablo and some games that are less demanding on these, but these are not meant to be your Crisis 3 rigs or anything like that. In terms of battery life, well, you've heard about how the MacBook Air is the Energizer Bunny. Yes, it is. It's insane, really, how long it runs. Apple says about 12 hours, and Apple has actually been optimistic lately with how long their laptops are going to run on a charge. So 12 hours is certainly quite realistic if you keep your brightness at 50%, even with Wi-Fi on. Surface Pro 3 is about six and a half, seven hours. Depends what you're doing. You can call it seven hours, again, at 50% brightness. So a lot more battery life for those of you who really know you're going to be away from, from an outlet for long periods of time. That's a concern. In terms of ports on each of these, obviously the Surface Pro 3 being a tablet can be a little bit port constrained, but it's not so so bad compared to the MacBook Air. We have a micro SD card slot. It's under this back door right here, little micro SD card slot. Headphone jack. No ports up there port over here. We have a mini display port, can drive better than full HD displays, one USB 3.0 port. On our Mac we have full size SD card slot right there, two USB 3.0 ports, one on this side, one on the other. This is our Thunderbolt port, also does mini display port, so puts on equal footing there. There's the other USB port that I mentioned, and a headphone jack. So you get a full-size SD card slot versus the micro version, and you get an extra USB port on this, if that matters to you. Both of these guys have stereo speakers built in, a built-in microphone as well. When it comes to the webcam, you get the usual 720p Apple webcam on here. It's not bad. It's okay. It does a decent job. The microphone does quite a good job. Microsoft really stepped up the game, and you get five megapixel cameras front and back. There's one above the display, and then there's one on the back also of the laptop. So for those of you who want to do some high-quality video chat or have certain vertical market needs for better quality video and photos, the Surface Pro 3 pulls ahead on that one too. So who are these products for? Well, both of them are kind of really for anybody. You know, there's not a single target market for these products, but obviously the MacBook Air is for the people who love to use Mac OS. Duh, no kidding, right? Surface Pro 3, more for the Windows camp right there. Also, for those of you who just want a traditional laptop, you don't want to touch that screen, you just want to have a good keyboard, a nice, durable, good-looking, metal-bodied Ultrabook with good performance, that's the MacBook Air. For those of you who are more cutting-edge and have more varied needs, you, you like the idea of having a tablet 
without having to buy a separate tablet. You like that three by two aspect ratio here that makes it kind of easy to use in portrait mode compared to other tablets. The versatility of having the keyboard cover that, well, it does protect the screen and all that sort of thing. The built-in pen, the touch screen, all that sort of stuff. So this is for more, I would say, for those who seek even more portability, smaller form factor, a bit lighter, and also cutting edge technology inside. Only you know which you are. So that's Surface Pro 3 versus the MacBook Air latest edition. And well, you can tell the specs and the innovation in the Surface Pro 3 are top notch and they do beat the MacBook Air. But in the end, it depends which operating system you want. And do you really need a laptop or do you want a tablet too? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these products, read our written reviews, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.